Hello again, everybody. So good to be with you for your next session of Pick a Better Snow. Yeehaw! Awesome to be with you again. So we've got something really delicious to try today and learn about, and we're gonna go to a very special place. But first, I wanted to show you something from my refrigerator. Does anyone recognize this? This is a tub of hummus. And I wanted to show you this because last month, you guys might have tried something in your classroom that came from a can. Some of you guys might have tried a chickpea. Raise your hand if you tried one of those. Yeah, and those are kind of funky. Maybe you felt like this about it. Maybe you felt like this about it. Maybe you felt like this about it. And I wanted to show you this hummus from my refrigerator because hummus is one of my favorite foods and it is made from chickpeas. So remember, if you felt kind of like this about the chickpea, or maybe like this, remember that we could maybe prepare the chickpea a totally different way and maybe you would like it, right? And that's true of a lot of foods. Sometimes we like them one way, but we don't like them another way. So remember that if you're not feeling so great about a food, maybe try it prepared a different way and maybe it'll be your favorite. I like to dip um, crackers or my favorite is bell peppers dipped in hummus. That's the way I like to have my chickpeas. From the can, I feel like this about them. But in this dip in hummus, I feel like this about them. Does anyone remember what chickpeas and all those other beans we talked about are good for? Who can show me what part of our body beans are good for? Yeah, beans are really good for our muscles. And that's because they are in the protein food group. And protein is really good for our muscles. Today, we are going to talk about something that is in our fruit food group. Ooh, and it is one of Miss Becca's favorite fruits. I have some in my cupboard right now in a can. I don't have any fresh, but I have some canned and I might even have some frozen. We are gonna be learning about a fruit that is in a group of fruits called the tropical fruit. And tropical fruits like to grow in places that are tropical. Does anyone know what that means? Tropical means that it is a climate that is warm pretty much all year round. And a lot of tropical places get a lot of rain too. So they're gonna be very green and lush and a lot of fruits like to grow in those places. So we're gonna be talking about tropical fruit. And what do you think? Does Maine sound like a place that is tropical? No, Maine gets cold in the winter. So we're talking about places that are maybe closer to the equator. Can anyone think of a place that we've already visited this year that's closer to the equator? Yeah, we went to Costa Rica and we are gonna to go to Costa Rica again to visit my friend Mary Lou. We're gonna join Miss Missy and Miss Emily there. And we're also going to join Corny Karen, who we haven't seen in a while, but she's gonna join us in Costa Rica. So let's get your stuff. Remember to pack your sunscreen and your hat and the short sleeve shirt. Let's go to Costa Rica and learn about tropical fruits. Hi, Marilou. Hi. <laughs> Glad you could come back. Thank you. It's April and here in Maine, it's raining outside. And it's pretty cold, not as cold as it was back in February, but it's starting to warm up just a little bit. How's the weather in Costa Rica? Well, the weather in Costa Rica is still nice and sunny. However, we're getting ready to start into winter. And in May, winter starts in Costa Rica. Because you remember from before, we're below the equator or right next to the equator. So our winter is your summer. And we don't get snow in our winter, but we get rain. It rains almost every day. So we're dressed appropriately for maybe next month in Costa Rica. Yes, if you come back next month, you'll be all set. So bring your rain gear. I'll come back. I'll be there. Oh, guys, I hear a knocking at my door. Let me just go see who that is real quick. You continue on without me. Maybe it's a cab driver and she's here to take her to Costa Rica. They better pick me up. <laughs> So Mary Lou, it's tropical fruit month. So do you have anything tropical that grows near your house? Actually, we do. Um, we have, uh, in our backyard, we have some banana trees and I also have a lime tree and uh, actually a lemon tree. The lemons and the limes look just alike here. And um, there's also an avocado, which isn't really a tropical fruit but everybody has things that grow in their yard, as well as the fact that for most tropical fruits like 
bananas and pineapples. They're big farms that grow those. And those are the things that you that they send to the United States. Did you send a pineapple? I will pineapple. Hi, Mary Lou. My name's Corny Karen. You were right. It was a cab driver. They dropped me off. The girls forgot me at home this time. Uh, you know what? It. Hi, Corny Karen. Nice Hi. to meet you. Oh, thank you. It's so nice to be here. You know what? I know how a pineapple grows. You take a pine tree, you mix it with an apple tree, and you get a pineapple, right? No. Yeah, pine trees exactly. grow in Maine and apples grow in Maine. Yeah. But wait, wait, do we grow pineapples in Maine though? Mary Lou, can we grow pineapples in Maine where we live? No, you can't grow pineapples in Maine. Pineapples need lots of sun and warm weather all year round. So I don't think they would work in Maine. Neither do like bananas. So, Corny Karen, that is not a pineapple. Well, I'm going to try it. Corny Karen, I think you're kind of corny. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't help it. And, and Mary Lou, I have to ask one more question. I keep hearing an animal or a bird or something. Do you have do you have birds or animals or insects? What's around you that's making noise? We have lots. Oh, do you hear that? What we is have that? Lots and, that's a bird. Ooh. And there are lots of birds around all the time in the morning. In the, actually, there's a bird at night here that starts chirping around eight o'clock when it's dark out. And a lot of the animals here don't seem to know that they're supposed to sleep <laughs> at night, not be talking. Hey kids, you gotta sleep. Yeah, at so we have lots of different birds. beautiful birds. In I have a friend, Senora Jamie, who has pineapples growing in her yard. And she said, mm -hmm. Uh, we could come see them if you if you wanted. Yeah, let's go do it. Buy pineapple. They compare. Courtney, Karen, I think that Mary Lou's friends' pineapples are going to look a little different than yours. Well, I think they are for sure. So off we go to visit my friend, Senora Jamie, to see her pineapples and bananas. And it's up and down, and around the corners because we're in the mountains. Hi, um, we're at my friend Senora Jamie's house and she's going to show us a little bit about her garden and what's in it. So this is my friend Senora Jamie. Hola, bienvenidos a mi jardín. Hello, welcome to my garden. Pineapples first got their name when Europeans discovered them in tropical climates. And they named them pineapple because they look almost like a pine cone. Only one pineapple grows on the crown. This is, I call it the mother crown. Only one pineapple will grow on the crown a year. And it takes a long time for them to grow. Longer than it takes a human baby to grow. Here's a pineapple that's a little bit more mature, but it's still a baby. And you see its own little crowns just starting to form. This pineapple is just starting to turn ripe. See, it's starting to turn yellow. They're still green, but it's just starting to turn yellow. Now, I used to let them get all the way yellow and all the way ripe in the garden, but the tropical birds started coming and eating them on me. So now I have to pick them when they're about this color, and I have to let them ripen in the house instead. And these are pineapples ready to be sold. That was so much fun. I missed Corny Karen. We haven't seen her in months. What do you think she's been up to? You been on vacation? I don't know where she's been. So just like Senora Jamie told us, 
the top of the pineapple that we cut off in the store. So if we buy a pineapple like this and we eat this yummy part down here, yum, 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 take the skin off that and eat that, oh, so good. This green part up here is the part that we could plant back in the soil and that would grow as a whole new pineapple plant. So it's pretty cool that sometimes we grow things from seeds, but there's other ways to grow things too. Pineapples do have seeds, but we like to start them from the green part. It speeds up the process a little bit. Next, we're gonna go see what is in pineapple. We're gonna go see what our scientists have to tell us about why pineapple is so good for us. Let's go. Oh, welcome to my laboratory. Today I heard we're talking about tropical fruit. Let me just clean this up. Wow, but there's a lot of good stuff in this crazy looking thing. Wait, it looks just like me. From my observations, pineapples have a lot of vitamin C that fight off germs and heal cuts and scrapes. They have a lot of fiber too that makes you full longer, your belly feel its best and energetic all day. The word of the day is distance. Distance is the amount of space between two things. It could be measured in inches, or feet, or even miles. Tropical fruits need to grow in a warm place, like down here in Costa Rica. They can't grow well where we live, here in Maine. It's just too cold. Costa Rica is really far away. It's 4,700 miles away. Can I show you how far that is? It would be like running back and forth on a football field 83,000 times. Oh my gosh. Do you think Cam Newton can do that? Back to you, lunch ladies. That's so far away that our pineapples are coming from. That's amazing, right? And unless you are growing fruits and vegetables in a garden at home where you can just pick them and rinse them and eat them, all of the food that we eat goes through a big long process before it gets to us, even if it's grown right here in the state of Maine. So our fruits and vegetables get grown on a farm or in an orchard or in a grove. They get grown by lots of people and then they have to get processed. So sometimes that means getting washed and packaged. Sometimes it means getting heated up so they don't have germs if we're talking about milk or juice, right? Then they get on a truck, they have to travel, right? Or maybe they get on a boat or a plane. And then finally they get to the grocery store or the food pantry or the food bank, wherever we get our food, where we pick them up, right? And then we bring them home and we eat them. What happens after we eat them? Do we eat all the parts of all the food that we get? No, not always, right? So when we cut the pineapple skin off the pineapple, there's a little bit of waste left, right? What can we do with that? That's right, we could compost it. All right, friends, last but not least, time for our taste test. If you are in the classroom, you are gonna be trying pineapples from a can, just like I have in my cupboard, and I'm so excited. I think you're gonna like them a lot. If you are not trying in your classroom, if you're trying at home, maybe see if you have a tropical fruit in your house. See if you can think through Okay, is this fruit like to grow somewhere warm or have I seen it growing in Maine, right? Things that we saw in our video like mangoes or pineapples or bananas, those are all tropical fruits. So maybe you have one of those to try in your house or maybe you have another fruit to try in your house. So remember to ask an adult, see if there's a taste test you can do. Use all your five senses to experience this fruit that you're trying and then tell someone about it. Tell them everything you learned today and tell them what you thought of that food, what your senses told you about that food. All right, friends, it was so fun hanging out with you today. Hope you enjoyed it. You got some good books to read and I will see you in May for your last lesson of the year. So be super brave, be ready to try some stuff and I'll see you then.